The 90s were a wild time for car people. They imported cars like the uh, Nissan 300ZX, the Nissan GTR, the Mazda RX-7, and the Mitsubishi 3000 GT were absolutely decimating the competition like a new player in Social Slayer and a Halo 2 server. Like, it was rough. And while the cars were continuing to get faster and faster, the scene surrounding the car community stateside had very limited options in terms of what they could do to modify their cars. Most cars, as you'd expect from back then, were supported by tuning companies that were located, you guessed it, in Japan. So while the dial-up was sometimes worth it and eBay Motors was still figuring itself out, there was a growing disparity between your dad that wanted to slam his car and a company that actually made the parts to do it in the United States. And from this very interesting story, Koenig Wheels was born. Which, by the way, I'm Alex, and I'm over here on Torque Motorsport to talk all about Koenig Wheels in our second episode of Everything You Need at Once. So don't forget to subscribe here, and if you want to learn more about Koenig Wheels, you can go check them out at KoenigWheels.com. We recently got them signed on for our upcoming series release, Torque Drift 2, and that means when you go to modify your car in the game for competition, you'll be able to choose Koenig Wheels on your drift car. But hey, let's take it back to a little bit of the history of the company. Now, Koenig Wheels came back from the year of 1983 and was originally built by a group of people who wanted to create wheels for the growing demand in the United States. This is where things can get a little bit interesting because it's through a partnership, at least initially, with a company called Panmar. They were able to solidify an import-export business to the United States and the wheels actually didn't initially target just tuner cars but muscle cars and even I would say some big boy lowrider cars. If you're a wheel connoisseur you can actually go find some very interesting old school Koenig wheels. Now Koenig is also a really interesting name for a wheel brand, considering it translates to king in German doesn't really do German Euro wheels, and it's owned by YHI International, which is located in Singapore, and feels Japanese due to its branding. But I suppose it's just like most things in America, just an exciting batch of ingredients that make really unique things. though immediately came to realize that while there were some big wins in the 80s it really hit its stride in the 90s with a very 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 specific wheel that was called the Koenig Helium. This thing was the Laurie Salt for wheels and it was pretty much everything every automotive tuner wanted back in the day. It had eight spokes, it was a convex style design which was super popular back then which just means that the spokes actually bent in versus flared out. It was on every single car. If you bought a car from the 90s that had one piece wheels or if your dad or mom have old pictures of their tuner cars, go check it out because it probably had this wheel. And this is where Koenig really started to take shape exclusively around the tuner crowd. So much so that in the mid 1990s, Koenig would launch their own comic book line that could be found at wheel distributors that carried the design and styling of a Japanese manga, which is really kind of interesting. A few years later, through the help of its continued partnership overseas with brands like YHI, they would introduce flow forming technology in the late 1990s into their wheels, where the barrel has its molecular grain structure aligned to improve rigidity and minimize unnecessary waste. It's a really great way to get a strong wheel that doesn't weigh a ton. Now, in the late 90s, this was huge in terms of innovation for the automotive industry because most people were still just making low pressure gravity cast wheels. But finally, in the mid 2000s, Koenig would go all out in the tuner market, introducing its tuner series, which had some absolutely killer looking wheels and maybe a couple two, three that were meant to stay in 2004. That's not a dig. It's just how it is. I love you, Scott. In 2005, you'd see Koenig get acquired by YHI International, officially. And it did nothing more than just put the boosters on what Koenig was already doing, not only in terms of development, but quality and everything in between. And here's why. You see, Koenig had gone all over the place in the 90s and even into the early 2000s. They were trying to make things like aftermarket seats. They were making exhaust systems. They were doing intakes and anything they could during the boom of the tuner age and as such it was really hard to nail in where Koenig was going as a brand in the future and as the 2000s came through and YHA acquired Koenig this meant that most if not all other things were kindly like pushed off. They wanted to really focus in on just doing wheels. Now, kind of sounds scary or weird but it was probably the best thing to happen to Koenig because they grew like crazy. You see, their investment in wheels allowed them to partner with brands like Hot Wheels for commemorative models. It allowed them to be one of the 
first paid advertisers in Super Street, a magazine that even I saved up for as a kid when I went to go spend my money when I had to sit on an airplane and there was no damn internet and there's no games and nothing I could do. Anyway, besides the point, it also gained them such a notoriety that Koenig would go on to make private label wheels for other wheel companies even to this day. So what does that mean? Private label means nothing more than they make wheels for other brands that you may see in the industry. So while Koenig has some serious lookers and some that were maybe a little bit different, it doesn't change the fact that their wheels are objectively one of the best flow form wheels you can buy on the market at a really good price. The Ampliform, for instance, was launched in 2019. It's a killer and it looks good to this day. The Renform, equally hot. One of my favorite ones that you can possibly buy. And because YHI International has some big arms and enough of a belly for anyone to jump up and down on, they've solidified their place as a premium wheel manufacturer with history of making wheels for other brands as well. YHI carries manufacturing techniques that you can see across in Enki, in Ozi, in Advanti, which Advanti had their own wheel line supplied through Formula One. So what can you expect from a brand like Koenig? Well, that's easy. Their full form stuff is where most people spend their time, even though the mainline wheels are there for a wider range of people. It also comes at a slightly lower cost, but all their wheels are designed to take a beating. And because they're invested in a ton of motorsport activities like Formula Drift, SCCA events, and more, they're still committed to not only making dope wheels, but supporting the community, which to me and to us is kind of a big deal because nowadays there's a lot of money in the aftermarket wheel space and there's a a lot of people spending money to just try and make more of it, but they're not really committed to actually doing cool stuff inside of the community. They're just trying to get a paycheck. And Koenig isn't one of those brands, which makes me pretty happy. But let me know if you knew all this, and if you'd like to drop a comment below on what you'd like to see us touch on next. I'm Alex over here on Torque Motorsport, and we will see you later. Adios.